Welcome to Studio Takes. I'm Dane Scott with Pocket Frog, the real host of the show. Sometimes it seems that way. All right, well, this is going to seem like a strange topic today, especially since, you know, it's going out on YouTube along with the podcast. But today, I'm going to talk about the danger of getting too much of your secondhand info from places like YouTube. Coming up. Three, two, one. Studio Takes. Real help for the aspiring voiceover artist. I always love getting your comments, and I especially really would like to hear your comments on this one. Uh, it's going to be a little bit controversial for some people. So please do like, do subscribe, and please do tell me your thoughts after you watch this today. And at the end, i got a special deal for you on voiceover coaching that you will only get through this special edition of Studio Takes. Well, we've entered into a strange time in history, I think, where the people who are instructing us learned what they know from people on YouTube, who learned what they know from other people on YouTube, who in turn learned what they know from still other people on YouTube and so forth. So we have a lot of uh, experts out there who are mainly just passing down second, third, fourth, fifth hand information. Some of it has its basis in fact, sure, and some of it is questionable. That's definitely happening in the voiceover world. Rather than uh, people getting the majority of their understanding, from first-hand experience. You know, they're learning from others who also got a lot of their knowledge not from first-hand experience either. It's kind of like, you know, going to a tech school to learn a trade and finding out that all the teachers there mostly are just repeating what they learned when they were in tech school rather than having actually gone out, you know, and become seasoned professionals at whatever their trade is, plumbers or architects or whatever themselves, first. And I'll give you a specific example. I attended uh, Brown Institute of Broadcasting in Minneapolis before I went into radio. And all of the teachers who were there were experienced broadcasters and engineers and salespeople. None of them were professional students who just might have, you know, done a little in radio, but mainly they were just passing along book knowledge. They'd all been down there in the trenches and they knew what they were talking about. It was just an awesome experience learning from them. They kind of felt like rock stars to us. Uh, they had so much knowledge. And not just knowledge, they had moxie. You know, they could back it up with real experience. Now, um, since COVID especially, voiceover people, I think, are trying to learn everything through courses and seminars and Facebook groups. And, well, you know, that can be a positive thing. But it disturbs me when I see people who have come up through the YouTube university ranks uh, turning around then and setting themselves up as experts, and then they start teaching other people. That's a little disturbing. Yeah, so rather than being a professional voiceover artist first, with a successful career to guide their instruction, they're mainly just regurgitating what they've heard from others. And before long, okay, here comes another generation and another and they're doing the same thing without any real solid grounding in their profession to back them up. So what happens is, uh, you know, they've picked up on all the typical groupthink. And they're getting a lot of homogenized information that really isn't based on their own personal experience. And to the extent that they've actually done VO work, their practices have been so colored by the hand-me-down knowledge that they've gotten from other people that they've never actually developed their own way of thinking outside the box. So they're just basically doing everything they've learned from somebody else who learned it from somebody else. The groupthink thing, I think, becomes so obvious when you see people asking, for example, what DAW do you use, Digital Audio Workstation? Wait a sec. Um... Yeah. Uh, what if you don't use a DAW? What kind of isolation booth do you have? Well... What if you don't use an isolation booth? What headphones do you wear when you're recording? What if you don't use headphones? Who told us all these things were a requisite? A couple of years ago, I did a series of videos called uh, Voiceover Mythbusters, where I addressed a bunch of these things. I did about 20 of them, if I remember right. And I'll provide a link in the comments of this studio tape. They were live feeds, so, you know, they're not 100% formatted for YouTube. There are like countdowns at the beginning of them that you'll need to skip past some of those preliminaries. But there is a lot of really good information in them that might help you to start to kind of break out of the box and look at voiceovers in a little different light. And in the end, it comes down to this. Yes, YouTube can be helpful. Yes, social media help groups can be good. 
But stay skeptical and don't get locked down into an information straitjacket. Keep your mind fresh and open to new ideas. Experiment. Uh, come up with your own solutions. Develop your own theories and prove them in actual practice. And I don't want to sound too harsh here, but before you turn around and start teaching others, get some real years of real world experience under your belt so you're not just rehashing stuff you heard from others. And I know that I'm kind of a, a voice crying in the wilderness on this. There's probably nothing that I'm going to be able to do to slow down the YouTube University Express. But I felt like I really wanted to at least give those who hear this a chance to look at the situation from a little different vantage point. To sum it up, uh, learn every way you can. And yes, you can learn by watching and learn by reading and learn by listening. But remember, that's just a starting point. And the best learning comes by doing. You know, it's kind of funny because even after doing voiceovers for 40 years, I wasn't sure at first whether I wanted to presume to teach others. Get out of here. But after I'd tried a few initial voiceover coaching sessions, I came to the conclusion I really did have some things to offer and I could give some good guidance, especially in the areas of in interpreting copy and using your voice. Uh, and since I've started, I've helped, well, I don't know how many people, but it's been a lot. Let's just say that. And... I get good comments from the people I've helped. So let me help guide you along too, and I promise none of it will be secondhand advice that I've picked up from somebody else. It's all stuff I've learned by doing. And if you order an initial session today, the link will be down in the show notes. I'm going to give you my gig winners course on how to create a winning voiceover demo free. That's a hundred dollar course, uh, yours free. Just mention it when we connect up and I'll give it, um, give you the link to it right on the spot. And that's it for today. Uh, do like, do subscribe, and please, yeah, let me hear from you with a comment on today's show. See ya. Hello. Hello. Hello, I think. Hello, cutie pie. And until I heard the voice, I'd never done a crazy thing in my whole life. Goodbye. Goodbye.